Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful Wednesday for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. And if you are new around here and finding yourself on my channel for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one around 1pm UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And that is exactly what we intend to do in this video. In fact, we're going to be starting the video off by looking at some comments made last night on Bloomberg TV by the honourable, the magnificent Gary Gensler, who has been nothing short of a thorn in the cryptocurrency markets side. Very interesting how he even ended up with that job. Um, no one really knows why he's doing what he's doing because he's getting his backside handed to him in regards to the lawsuit that lawsuits that he's brought forward. But he made some comments yesterday in regards to the cryptocurrency industry. We're going to be taking a look at the first one, um, which I found or essentially thought was a good take from Brad Garlinghouse, obviously the CEO of Ripple. And then we're going to be looking at the second one, which is where he talks about the industry more broadly and his kind of view more broadly on things. So He's a very important guy to watch because he's very much acting as a dam that is stopping the waters that are the cryptocurrency market from sort of uh, flooding the traditional markets. And that's essentially what is to come. We are going to get and we'll be hearing some news from Eric Balanchunas, the head analyst or the senior analyst for ETFs over at Bloomberg. Um, he's actually talking about a filing that was just made. And seven days after this filing was made for Bitcoin, you have the spot ETF, which aligns with the kind of what's the date today? 2nd of June kind of predictions that have been thrown around. Then we're going to dive into some charts. We'll be re-talking about that interesting thing in regards to CoinShares' report. Because yes, Bitcoin's been seeing outflows. I think it's seven straight days of outflows at this point. However, and this is a big however, um, we are actually seeing altcoin basket product inflows, which is interesting because we're bullish on a lot of the altcoin baskets that are already offered out there in the forms of exchange traded products, 21 shares, you know, these kind of things. We don't see anybody else highlighting not only crypto stocks in relation to this market. And we've, I mean, uh, I, I don't mind revealing some of the stocks that we've got, you know, Terra Wolf, we've got people 177% up since we made that call. Get on board with that, guys. We don't just cover cryptos, we cover crypto related stocks in the Patreon take that um, journey with us. And there's many at the moment that we think are going to do spectacular in what is going to be a bullish environment generally. But ETPs look great. We'll be talking about it all. Let's start things off with a tweet from Brad Garlinghouse. Um, somebody that was zealously going to try and get on the show, by the way, guys. So absolutely nonsense coming from Gary Gensler today. Is there anything new there? And this slander about all crypto execs going to jail from the man who completely missed FTX and actually uh, cozied up to Sam Bankman-Fried and wasn't even invited to the DOJ announcement about Binance. If he was really working for American people, as he says, he would have been fired a long time ago. Gensler will cause Biden to lose the election. Gensler actually replies to this. So we're going to listen to the initial comment that he made in regards to the industry. Um, and then we will, uh, or in regards to, you know, CEOs and things like this being fired, being put in jail. CZ should never have been put in jail, in my opinion. I think they got him on technicalities. Um, they got him for not dotting the I's and crosses the T's. And I think CZ was a good good guy. Uh, and it saddens me to see that he went to jail. He's gone to jail a very rich man and BNB is going to do very well, I believe. So he's going to become even richer and I'm over the moon for him. This is a guy that started off flipping burgers in Burger King. Goes to show, doesn't it? Uh, and actually, interesting fact, Albert Einstein, somebody who many people would call a genius, did horribly at school. Goes to show, doesn't it? Um, anyway, a bit of, completely off topic there. Uh, let's dive into this retweeted uh, clip from Brad Garlinghouse. This is a field that the leading lights from a couple years ago are either in jail, about to go to jail, or, or waiting extradition. Think about it. This is that field. That's the field right now where the public has really been harmed. And there's significant non-compliance in the field. And you would have thought it was Gary Gensler's job to prevent that from happening. Um, but he, he hasn't done it on any account. In fact, in the Terra situation, the Terra Luna situation, the only people benefiting from that situation is Gary Gensler and the SEC. They're the only people getting two point something billion dollars from the case. 
uh, or from that whole catastrophe. Not the people that were harmed. Uh, I find it, you know, like people think the Fed is stupid, right? And they're just deliberately or or they just don't realize they're destroying the money supply and this, that, and the other. No, it's all on purpose, guys. And it's all for your impoverishment. And that's what this channel is really all about, helping people understand that through investing, you can change your financial status. You can grow with the inflating money supply, not diminish against it like most people do. The poor or, or the, the um, lower working class and the middle class are getting destroyed to the point where they're going to become one class and then you're going to have a ruling class over them. Even the lower upper class is getting uh, really diluted at a rapid rate. It's, it's only really the top 1% that is growing with the money supply. And you can see that in regards to the wealth equality. And, and, and it's because of the games that they're playing. And it's deliberate. They want a style of communism. They want them and everybody else. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, we're throwing all sorts of tangents out today, guys. Let's talk about and let's review the longer clip um, of Chair Gensler talking in regards to the election and things like this. This, of course, was retweeted by Eric Valentunis, which who we're going to come on to in a minute. Let's dive into this. We're going to speed it up because it's about three minutes long. As you know, crypto, though, is becoming almost an election issue. There's reports that former President Trump is going to speak at this big Bitcoin conference. He said that he will end, quote, uh, oh, Joe oh, Biden's oh. war on crypto. And there's one more. Um, it's become such a big deal that Mark Cuban has actually said that you, Mr. Gensler, could, quote, literally cost Joe Biden the election. What's your response to this? I, I'm, I'm going to be e easy with you, Maria. I don't speak about elections. Do you don't have a response to Mr. Cuban? I, I, I just, I don't. I just really, look, I, my role as a securities regulator, as chair of this great 5,000-person agency that oversees $120 trillion capital markets, we are here to look out for investors, look out for issuers, and we're appropriate to be a cop on the beat. And we have a set of rules that are pretty clear. There's nothing inconsistent about crypto securities and the securities laws. Unfortunately, there's a number of people that are non-compliant with the laws. Let me ask it a different way. Are you surprised by the political movement we've seen around crypto? I, 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 again, I mean, I'm a securities regulator. I'm focused every day on that part of my job, which is protecting the investors, looking out for issuers, access to markets, fair, orderly, and efficient markets. And with all respect, I hope your listeners understand that's, that's my role. Other people can speak about um, elections. So the election is coming up, though. And although your term... <laughs> and although, Marie, although your term take is, three. Although your term um, goes beyond November 5th, is there something you want to get done? Do you feel like you're up against the clock to get something done before the presidential election? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, it's such a privilege to be in this role. I really mean it. I can't believe I'm serving my third president. And I've been through Senate confirmation six times and all this. I just, I just can't believe that. And every day, I think, is a privilege to help the American public. Our clients, 330 million Americans. It's, it's about chasing down insider trading. It's about making sure that there's the proper disclosures. It's about implementing. We still have some significant things. We just implemented this big transition to having the clearance, the settlement cycle to one day. I mean, wow, the guy's just dodging all kinds of questions. To think that he doesn't have pressure on him, and he knows this in regards to the election, um, is beyond me. I mean, the fact that Biden is raising funds through Coinbase and going to be taking donations through Coinbase and Gensler's going after Coinbase, which is a case that's going to get thrown out just like all of the rest of them. You know, now that they've approved and on the topic of an Ethereum ETF, uh, this is from Eric Balanchunas just yesterday. So Vanek just filed an 8A form for Spot ETH which is just part of the process, but should be noted that they filed their 8A for Spot Bitcoin ETF exactly seven days before launch. Good sign uh, for our July the 2nd over under seven days from now. But again, any p pass, um, anything's possible. Sure, we'll hear more soon. Um, so now that he's approved, they dropped the thing against consensus they drop things against ripple um there's about to be that dam breaking and the sort of floodgates opening if you will in regards to this industry and the altcoin market is not going to not appreciate from that um us bitcoin etfs see seven straight days of outflows so this is still continuing 
the really interesting thing for me was the inflows that we saw. We saw nearly $100 million in regards to multi-asset products. Uh, we'll come on to Bitcoin in just a second. Let's get off the daily time frame. We don't really want to be on there. A um, little bit of a strong dollar today. Remember, we've got PCs coming at the end of the week. So this is our 21 shares. If, if these charts are bullish, guys, and these are basket of crypto ETPs, and we think they're going to, some of them even get close to 10x, We've got miners that are going to do, you know, 20x, we think. Um, what's That's not going to be a bad environment for crypto more broadly and generally, is it? Um, so there's a lot of kind of things that align, not just technically, also sort of fundamentally, yada, 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 walking, talking, quacking like a duck. It's a duck. I know people get annoyed with that saying, but I really couldn't care. You know, at the end of the day, the channel isn't for uh, everyone. If people don't want to watch it or it annoys them, just don't watch it. Go somewhere else, guys. Um, but broadly, when we look at things, things look fantastic. I'd still believe this is just a pullback in what is a broader uptrend. You always have this kind of sideways period post halving, and you always have it around this kind of these kind of months of the year, the seasonality effects. Uh, but generally, the market, in my opinion, is in good health. The reason we started with Gary Gensler was because he is actually a critical part of this, whether we like it or not, industry, um, because he has, in some ways, the keys to enabling the sort of um, institutionalization of this industry, this industry to actually become an industry. And you're speculating, and I'm speculating on this market before it's even been allowed to do that, believing that it will eventually be able to. And we're starting to see the sort of cracks in that dam with uh, Gary Gensler's sort of regime. But again, didn't really expect much other than non-straight answers. The, his answers were about straight as a roundabout. Um, and that's just how he rolls. You know, he's a diplomat at the end of the day on top of being the head of the Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, it's going to be interesting because if somebody like Trump wins, Gary Gensler's out. Um, and I think actually if it was someone like Kennedy or whoever it is, Gensler will be thrown to the wayside, I think, and won't be serving that full term. And I think he knows that, but I think he would have secured probably quite a cushy position um, after this. Uh, and I, I'm still waiting to see where the former head of enforcement for crypto from the SEC who resigned or had it in his notice. I'm still waiting to see where he goes. I can guarantee it's going to be a crypto company. There'll be big money thrown at him, I'm sure. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this content as much as I enjoyed presenting it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next.